So this is a harpsichord. This is the big brother of the harpsichord family. Um, it's got the, for want of a better word, grand piano shape. Um, this has a very elegant double uh, curve on it because this is a copy of a German instrument from 1710. So I've got three rows of jacks here. We've got two that are plucking parallel strings and then we have these which pluck the much shorter strings, um, the four foot strings there. We have two keyboards on this particular instrument um, and that is so that we can have a bit of tonal contrast between loud and soft, well sort of not very loud and, and a little bit softer, um, but it does give you a much different effect between things so we can have a nice good crunchy chord down here and a softer on the upper manual which just uses less of the quills plucking the string and just one set of strings as opposed to two down on the bottom. The harpsichord was the perfect instrument for accompaniment. You found them in the church, you found them in the court, you found them in domestic environments if you had the space and the time and the money. Their instrument is really the sort of um, top end of the harpsichord buyer's market in the 18th century. German instruments are different from French instruments, Flemish instruments and English instruments. They all have different flavours of types of sound because each national identity wanted a certain characteristic and these German instruments are characterised by a very singing tone. Perfect for those beautiful lines in Bach. etc. Um, but they also have um, a quite an Italian characteristic which is a rather sort of percussive lower end to the sound. They also have great clarity. French instruments tend to be very rich and refined and noble. Um, Flemish instruments which were the ones that were regarded by most of Europe as the perfect all-round harpsichords tend to have a nice mixture of all of these but I've always been attracted to German harpsichords which is why I've got two of them. Thank you.